All right, as we continue to work with logarithms, I do want to mention that if you had an equation y equals 2 to the x, you already know what kind of model it is, exponential. And if we wrote it as f of x equals 2 to the x, uh, one of the things we did start to talk about is what the inverse would look like. And remember, you can take these x and y ordered pairs and switch them. Okay, and so by switching the x and the y ordered pairs, um, we don't really need to make it that small, that big. Um, by taking those ordered pairs and switching them, we created a log graph. So when you see f of x is 2 to the x, I do want you to mention that the inverse of f of x is log base 2 of x. Okay, so for f of x equals 2 to the x, f to the negative 1 of x equals log base 2 of x is indicating that those functions are inverses of each other. Um, so let's see. If we, the other thing I wanted to mention with the inverse is if I wanted to graph 2 to the x, remember 2 to the x, every height off the asymptote is double the height before. Every height off of this asymptote, every height is double the height before. And it does make a nice curve because that was 2 to the x, the phenomena of doubling. What I did not mention is because they are inverses, you can see through the graph 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. What is the equation of that line that goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3? That line, y equals x, um, you can see shows that the blue and the red are reflections of each other. And that's what inverses do. Inverses are reflections of each other over that line y equals x. So uh, earlier we had looked at y equals 10 to the x. And we did graph its inverse by switching the x and the y. So if f is 10 to the x, you can now say the inverse f to the negative 1 of x is log base 10 of x. And log base 10, you will actually see people write that as just log of x, because that is the log button on your calculator. Can you fill in the asymptotes for the log graph? Okay, let's try that. The asymptotes for the log graph. The asymptote is a vertical line. So that's the y-axis, x equals 0. The domain of the log graph, the domain of this log graph, looks like it's everything above zero. And the range for this log graph looks like it's anything you want it to be, which again would be the switching of the exponential domain and range. So those were some things I had left off as we do move on and continue to work with exponentials. I want to start talking about how you would solve equations using logs, basically. So if I started with an equation 2 to the x equals 16, you already know that you can rename the bases. 16 is 2 to the fourth. And if the bases are the same, you can basically cross them out and just say that the powers are the same. So we've done that. We've made it more complicated. e to the x equals e to the 5x minus 7 you can do the same thing. They already have the same base, so now all you have to do is think about crossing out those bases and setting the power equal to the power. I would solve by moving x to the right and moving 7 to the left. And your answer, you're dividing both sides by what gets the x by itself. You're dividing both sides by 4. So you can just leave it 7 fourths. So if the problems are not the same base, let's say it's a 2 to the x equals 5. Well, we can't make 5 into a 2 to a power at this point. So we can start to figure out ways to get the power down. You see here, this is a power. If I rewrite this in log form, so log form, if you have log base b of a number equals another number, you have to know that means b to the p power equals n, okay? So if you can appreciate this very 
important conversion, you can do that conversion here. 2 to the x equals 5. So it would be log base, well, which one's the base? Um, 2 of the number, which one's the number? Equals the power, and the power was x. So logs do a lot for us because you can appreciate just by putting it in log form, you have solved for x. Now in your calculator, you might have a calculator that will let you do log base 2 of 5, but most calculators only have a log base 10 button. So you're going to have to do log of 5 divide by log of 2. It's called the renaming basis theorem. And if I were to just do log of 5 divide by log of 2, which I'd like you to try to do on your calculator, you get approximately, it's never going to be really exact, unless the answer could have been done um, without a calculator. Um, if you need a calculator, it's almost always going to be something you're going to have to round. Two point, let's say to the hundredths. Actually, with logs, you might even round to four decimals. Three, two, one, nine. So we're saying two to the 2.3219 power is the closest answer we're going to get to make it equal five. So logs are our friends. You really want to appreciate that logs would help us. So if I said 3 to the x power equals 6, um, I cannot make 6 a power of 3. So I'm going to rewrite it as a log base, which one's the base of what number equals what number. So you've got to fill that in. So for 3 to the x equals 6, you can say log base 3 of 6 equals the power x. And so if x is log base 3 of 6, your calculator, you're going to have to press log of 6 over log of 3 if you don't have the special button. Or you can actually do the natural log of 6 over the natural log of 3, which some people like to write it that way because it's shorter. So you can do the ln of 6 divided by the ln of 3 and get the same exact answer if you did the log base 10 of 6 over the log base 10 of 3. And that approximates to 1. Point, uh, what does that say? 1.6... 309. So that's a start.